everybody. I'm Larry Ridley, and this is the NFL on EA Sports. Opening week in the NFL is an exciting time for everybody, including these two teams here today. It's the Colts going up against the Broncos. The opening kick of the new season is straight ahead as we turn it over to our broadcast duo of Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. All right, Larry, thank you very much. We are pleased, as always, to be bringing you coverage of the National Football League presented by EA Sports. The scene a few moments ago, here it is. It's unlike any other in sport as both teams made their way out of the tunnel. These folks are fired up as their guys are ready to do battle between the Indianapolis Colts and the Denver Broncos. And hello again, everyone. Brandon Gordon alongside Charles Davis. And Charles, we look at this Bronco team in early season tilt. And when it's an early season tilt, should be ready to roll. Well, let's face it, the aches and pains haven't really set in yet. And both teams eyeing a really good start to get things going. Meanwhile, for the visiting Colts, and I don't think from what we saw down on the field before the game, there's any doubt they're ready to roll. They pass the eye test, don't they? This team looks fired up and ready to play. So the Colts now coming out for their opening drive. And they will be led out by their 6-4 quarterback. Try and start this drive in the air. Oh, he's got a little daylight. And he will return this one to the 30-yard line. Brandon, when we sat with the offensive coordinator and the head coach and talked about how they wanted to begin this game offensively, they talked about their script, didn't they? 10 to 15 plays, the first 10 to 15 they had on their script. Nowhere on the script was there throwing an interception, I have to believe. And they'll start this drive with very good field position. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. Wide open receiver complete. And they do get him down, but he's inside the five all the way to the threes. A very solid gain of 27. But when you hit him on the move like that, and he's able to get into open field with a full head of steam, Oh, boy, it's going to be tough to get him down. Yeah, there was a big window. They're lucky they did get him down. They'll run it now out of the gun. And the D not yielding much there. He's only going to get a yard to about the two. Good first step there defensively, but they're still knocking on the doorstep. So maybe another run here? I think so. One of my favorite coaches used to say, son, if you could darn near lay down near the end zone and get in, give me my... And he will score. Touchdown, Denver. It's their quarterback with his first career touchdown in his first career game. And the Broncos have taken the early lead. He didn't originally want to run, but he didn't see anything in the passing game, so he scrambled. And wouldn't you know it, he scores a touchdown anyway. It's awfully nice to have a quarterback who can make things happen with his legs. And he's got it. 7-0 Broncos. the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. And you combine a big leg with a mile high air. There's the outcome. This will sail out of the end zone for a touchback. Here comes the Indianapolis offense now as they get set to take over. And last time wasn't pretty. One play and an interception. We'll see if they can do better. I want to see if they want to go ahead and throw the ball again now on this drive after what happened on the last one. Throw it on the first play. Give the quarterback some confidence. <laughs> see what happens. They go back to the air here after the INT on the last drive. Over the middle complete. It's Cole. 
And they're able to get this one across the 35. Indianapolis moving the chains there on a gain of 12. That looked like a pretty good route combination there because you've got to find a way to clear the guy running the drag. Because when you do, you can just put the ball on him and then let him run. A big seam, and he might go all the way. Touchdown, Indianapolis. A big play there. 63 yards. And the Colts are an extra point away from tying up this football game. Well, go ahead and strap in, partner. We, <laughs> less than two minutes in, had the score on the one side. A quick answer, though, to get the equalizer. Sometimes you get that sense of urgency that ratchets up, right? When you give up an early touchdown like that, you just know you're like, okay, how do we go back and equalize things? Can we get it done fast? And they absolutely did. Essentially, we're back to even, aren't we? Now the extra point. It's good, and we're all tied at seven apiece. So a tie ball game here as the kick's away. This is fielded at the chalk of the 10. Solid return, pretty good field position. They'll start at the 32-yard line. And Denver getting set to take the field. And they're hoping to redo their efforts in the last drive when they got into the end zone. And just think of what it's like now on the sideline, because when you score a touchdown, you have to go over and look at the tablet and see what you did on the last drive. When you scored points, it's a whole lot better view than when you're trying to figure out how to fix things there. A good pick up there, 22. I don't care who you put on him, he's going to be a handful in one-on-one -on -one throws. Yeah, right now, you're right. They're in man-to-man, -man, maybe need some safety help. I would say that'd be a good idea. Double-team him somehow. I'm going to have to make someone else beat me rather than let him shred my defense. And this time, he's able to take it down to the 42. That throw good for four. It's second down. Second down to the offense in search of six yards. They'll run it now out of the gun. Trying to bounce it outside, but he's only able to get it back to the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play there, so they're left with a third down and six. So nothing there. I don't know that that's all in the back, though. you got to look at blocking there, don't you? I would agree with that totally. At some point, they have to win at the point of attack. Instead, it was the defense getting it done again and holding them to no gain. And now on third down, they'll need to get it to the 36 to pick up the first. Time running out here on the play clock. He'll look to throw. And he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. It's a great job by this secondary. When I watch them, they remind me of elite defenders on a basketball court, right? They want to contest each and every pass. Great contest on third down to bring up fourth. So a good kick there, and they finish off the drive with three. And that should be the goal for an offense, finish each drive with points. So that's a nice job there to come away with at least something. And this will be a touchback as Ed sails over the end line. Here comes the Colts offense now as they make their way onto the field. And for them, a touchdown their last go around. Obviously, they'll be hoping to do that again. And when you start plotting for this drive, when you start thinking to yourself, okay, what are we going to do? You don't go away from what you did before because that worked. But you have to be prepared for wrinkles and counters because you know they'll make some adjustments. That one for Indianapolis resulting in 15 yards and a fresh set of downs. Never make the mistake that the slot receivers, especially the little guys like we're watching here, are just quicker than fast. A lot of them combine quickness and speed, and they catch a lot of footballs, as we just saw there. Offense comes to the line now, first and ten. And he'll give it here to his running back. Stops shy of the 45 despite some powerful running. 
They give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. And the big boys up front in the trenches. What do you think of the O-line, Charles? I love them because this is a group that's so cohesive. They know what the man next to them is going to do at all times, and they operate as a terrific unit. Six yards here to go for the offense on second down. Back at the 43-yard line. Call it a loss of two on the play. And they're going to face a third down. Here we go now. Three, three. Looking to throw. He sets to fire deep. Oh, it's a touchdown if he holds on. Instead, it's fourth down. Those throwing windows get a lot tighter near the end zone, don't they? And here's the thing. You already probably have three points in your hip pocket. You force a throw here and give up an interception, you come away with nothing. Especially tough in the middle third of the field where he threw that one. Fair catch called for right around the 11-yard line. So a change of possession here on the punt. And it'll be first and 10 Broncos from deep in their own territory. And to give this time to the tailback. So one quarter in the books here on our first Sunday night telecast of the year. 10-7 our score. EA Sports NFL Sunday returns following this. The NFL on EA Sports is presented by Snickers. You're not you when you're hungry. Snickers satisfies. Back alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. It's Bronco football to begin quarter number two, and they've got it here with a first down. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. They'll look to throw here on first down. And he'll be brought down by the Colts. And they weren't in zone coverage. They were in man, and each man did his job. And that looked like vintage, old-school coverage, didn't it? Man coverage reminded me of an old Raiders team. They had a Hall of Famer at one corner and a defensive player of the year at the other, and they just locked people down. Only two yards on the pickup there, and now they're looking at a long third down. Well, so many times we look at a short run and we praise the offense for trying to set the tempo and establish things, but the defensive guys, hey, they just won the battle there. It wasn't a big run given up. They don't always have to absorb the body blow. Sometimes they dish them out themselves. And he'll get it up near the 35, right at the 34 here. 11 yards on the pickup, and that'll bring up fourth down. The Broncos send out their punter now as he's on to punt for the first time tonight. He'll send this away into the Rocky Mountain night, and it's a good one. Yeah, he was looking for the checkup bounce, didn't get it. That scoots all the way into the end zone now for a touchback. And now Indianapolis set to take the field. The crowd may be losing just a little bit of the edge after back-to-back -back punts. They want some big plays. They want to see some offense. They want to see somebody break away, whether it's through the air or on the ground. Now it'll be interesting to see where the patience is on both sides. Each head coach, can you hang in there and not try and force something that could put your team in some jeopardy? First down. Throws a quick hitter on the slant. That's complete. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. A gain of 11 that time and a Colts first down. That was a nicely run slant route. And what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route and then breaks it off. Usually after about three to four steps and cuts towards the middle of the field. And now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and get the quarterback a really nice target. Give him three on first down. 
It'll set up a second and seven. Now back to throw. And he fires one that's intercepted. Picked off near the 44. And they will finally stop him, but a great return. Gets that football all the way down to the 16-yard line. And that's a great example of ball skills right there, partner. You and I do a lot of games, and I can't tell you how many guys look to run with the football before they've intercepted it. So that's a nice job of focusing on the task at hand and coming away with the interception. Denver getting set to take the field. They were forced to punt last time, and I doubt sincerely that they'll have to punt here because they're gifted with terrific field position. I don't even want to think about the idea that they would end up punting starting with this type of field position. Neither do they. Great starting spot, great opportunity to run your full playbook. If they want to take a shot here, they can go ahead and do it. And he'll be taken down at the two-yard line. A nice pickup of 14, and it moves the stick, sets up a first and goal. He's been the forgotten man in this first half. Not a guy you want to forget. Not only his first catch, first time they've targeted him. That doesn't make any sense, does it? And that is caught. Touchdown, Denver. And he's such a talented tight end. Just creates nightmarish tight matchups on the other side. He's so good that when we say tight end, we're almost damning him with fan praise, aren't we? Because he can do it all. He's as good as any receiver in the NFL. Well, that's the deal. He's a wide receiver, just in a bigger body. Bigger body, a matchup nightmare, and who's going to cover him? When I sit in the film session, I just look at the coach and say, really? Really? You're going to yell at me? You go cover him. Extra point attempt to come here. It's good to make it 17-7. drive started with not a whole lot of real estate in front of them in plus territory excellent field position two plays later pay dirt the kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away so a very short kick here. This will be taken by one of the up men. And they're going to start this drive in pretty good shape as they get it up past the 30. And now Indianapolis set to take the field. And following the interception, just any interception, are you a little bit more cautious when you start that next drive? Or no, you just throw that out the window. I think you are. I don't think that there's any way you can run back out there and go, ah, totally didn't affect me. Let's just go ahead and be loose with the football again. You're going to take care of it, but you have to be careful about being too cautious because now you can't run any offense at all. Still want to attack. We'll see how they attack him here. They'll run it now out of the gun. Oh, and now he bowls him over. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little game. It'll be a pickup of 10 yards. And it'll make it a second down. Two minutes to go here in the first half. A reminder coming up at this and every halftime this season, we'll be checking in with Larry Ridley in Orlando for highlights and analysis of our first half. LR, that's my man. That's your guy. Oh, he dropped it. They were looking for him in the middle third. He couldn't catch it. Now third down. The one thing that I've liked defensively is that they've shown them a lot of different looks here in the first half. They've come after them. They've sat back. I think that's what you need to do to keep an offense guessing. And they certainly have kept them on their toes. That's why they haven't had much success on the scoreboard. Out of the gun now on third down. And the third down pass falls incomplete. Well, they've had a pretty frustrating first half here offensively, and they just continued there with that incompletion. Yeah, definitely frustrating for them, but heartening for the other guys. Those stop troops, they're enjoying things right now because they've made it very difficult for them throughout the half. And he gets this away, and look at this. This is a good one. And a bit of a mistake there. This is well into the end zone for a touchback. 
Out comes this field general once more, leading his offense back onto the field. He's thrown for a touchdown. He also ran for a touchdown, so they have to count for a guy that can do a little bit of both. And because of that, that puts a defense back on its heels because normally you just think, okay, he's going to throw the ball. Let's tee off, put a little extra pressure on him. But when he's able to either escape or run with the ball and design plays, that really changes what you try and do on defense. Yeah, you certainly can't forget about the arm, that's for sure. Kid had a ton of success here so far, but you get the feeling that he might be on the verge of popping one. Yeah, even on that one, there was a little bit of a hole, but it closed there quickly at the end. Now a shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. Yeah, quick throw here, that's complete. And he's able to get out to the 32, brought down there. Call it a gain of seven, and it gets him a new set of downs. Well, if you do read man coverage, Brandon, the drag route's a pretty good one to run against it because you're running away from people on it. Now flags will come in. I think this one's going to be on the defense for jumping. Encroachment, defense. Yeah, he got a little aggressive too early. And he did, wanting that quick takeoff as the ball was snapped, but I think sometimes those big guys on offense, they're pretty cagey too, right? They make those little sudden moves or those little subtle moves that get you to jump. It's complete on the bubble screen. That's Patrick. Give him 30 yards there. And depending on the type of screen called, especially when you're throwing it with one of your wideouts, it's different blocking. Sometimes you get great blocking from the other wide receivers helping you. And how about sometimes getting it from the offensive linemen who sell it like a regular screen pass? And all the way home for a Bronco score. Coach talk about those late in the half scores, especially ones that give your team a pretty decent cushion. He said those could be the ones that could finish off a squad if you let them. Yeah, they've got the cushion. This half has been theirs. A drive there of just four plays, and it culminates in a touchdown by the Broncos. Kick this one away, and off it goes. This is taken at his four. And he'll get it up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. And the Colts coming out now. And what do you think goes on here in this situation? If you got the football, you're trailing, you're back in your own territory with just a little time. Do you try something? You're thinking about jump-starting your team, right? You just mentioned it. They're down. They're trying to get back into the game. But you've got to figure, if something goes wrong, you may have put yourself in a spot where you may not be able to come back in the second half. Managing risk, this is a big decision here. Second and ten, he'll look to throw again. He'll be brought down by the Broncos. It's a sack. And there it is, sack number 201. He has broken Bruce Smith's all-time record. For a lot of us, we wondered if anyone would get to that record. But the way teams are throwing the ball around, more opportunities for these sack artists to accumulate numbers. And we've seen the biggest number of all eclipse today. So we've reached halftime here in our initial Sunday night telecast of the new season. As we send you on to Orlando, we hook back up with Larry Ridley. He's got our EA Sports Halftime Report. All right, Brandon, we'll see if I can get through this without being skipped. As we welcome you to our EA Sports Halftime Report. The Broncos are happy to be in front right now and just want to play two more solid quarters. The Colts just want to come out after the half and claw their way back into the game. All right, here we go. Let's take a look at some of the highlights from the first half. Now first and 10, under pressure here, the ball is picked off. Ebron's reading the play and comes away with it, ending the drive. After 
after the pick. Offense comes out now. Easily, he's going to look for space. And this two-play drive goes for a TD. Broncos up by a touchdown. First and 10. Vaughn's going to show off his speed. And this two-play drive goes for a touchdown. Colts with the ball midway through the second. Here's a throw. is hurried and picked off. Broncos defense comes away with the turnover. Offense out now following the INT. The catch is made in double coverage, and it's caught for the score, pushing the lead to 10. Now first and 10, coverage breaks down here, and this goes 33 yards for the score. Broncos now up by 17. That'll do it from our EA Sports Studios. Let's get back to Denver with Brandon and Charles. So both teams have their marching orders and we'll get going again here in quarter number three. This is taken just shy of the 10 here. Now here's the signal caller getting ready to lead this offense again. He's showing off that arm, showing it off very well. They've got the lead. Don't forget though, about the protection he's had. The protection's been good. And I'll guarantee you, he hasn't forgotten about it at all because that's keeping him clean in the pocket, allowing him to step into throws and make those deep passes come true. I mean, it's just been beautiful for him to do. But guess what? In the huddle, on the sidelines, guaranteed he's thanking those big guys up front for keeping him safe. I have a feeling he may even buy dinner. <laughs> Indeed, entertaining to relive some of those deep balls. They go play action here on first down. Dancing to his left. Room to run past midfield. And he's going to be out of bounds, but able to take it inside the 40-yard line. Big yardage there on the scramble. It gets him a first down. On that play, as you saw the route start to develop downfield, I got the sense that maybe the run would set up for him. And he took full advantage of it and got a big gain on a busted play. Here we go. They run the counter now on first down. <laughs> and able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little gain. A nice run there, nine yards, and it'll be second down. They're trying to show that they can run the ball, protect this lead, give it to the backs, play a little bit of keep away, don't you think? And that's probably a good philosophy at this point, going to make that defense stand up and stop them. On play action, they'll throw. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. And he is going to be knocked flat on his back. Oh, a big hit at the 29. Well, that was an okay hook up there with his tight end, but unfortunately, they didn't get the kind of yards they had hoped for. That's going to bring up third down. Back to throw. A bullet throw, but incomplete. Perhaps they overthought this one a little bit. They've been running it real well on this drive, and it was third and short, okay? They decided to throw the football incomplete. Yeah, they might have thought just a little bit too hard about that play selection. So a good snap, good hold, and that one's right down the middle. Never in doubt. Just the way you used to hit them, Brandon. <laughs> And this will not be returnable. It's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. Now we take a glance at the offense as they work their way back out for their first possession of the second half. They're down in this game. A chance for the offense, though, to put something on the board, get some momentum here in half two. Try and get things kick-started for them. And you know at the half, they discussed how they were going to get that done. This is where scripting comes into play a lot how, of the how time. How many plays do you script coming out of the second most, half? Most of the time in the first half, you're scripting 12 to 16. I think in the second half, you're really scripting more like 8 to 10. Kind of a starter or an opener, whatever they, whatever terminology they use. Just something to get you off to a quick start. They'll run it now out of the gun. And it'll scratch out only about a yard up to the 32. This is what happens sometimes when you abandon the running game. It's hard to get back to it because once guys get out of that mentality of firing out and hitting people, hard to get them started again occasionally. And on third down, a nickel formation here defensively. Hey, 
Here's a play fake as they set up to throw. And the pressure will get to him. He goes down. Now there is a flag on the play, but this looks like holding on the offense. So instead of giving them another third down, they'll decline it, brings up four. Now that's smart football right there. You don't even have to really spend a lot of time considering it. Just know that you're probably going to get the ball back. Good job declining that penalty. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. And here's a fair catch taken at about the 24-yard line. So possession goes over here on the punt, and the Broncos take over. First down and 10. They'll look to throw now on first down. And it's a short one here, complete to his tight end. And now look at him go. And all the way home for a Bronco score. A big play there with now three week one touchdowns. And the Broncos will add on to their lead. And this is obviously quite a performance. And most of the time when we talk about someone putting a team on their back, I think we're talking about a, a guy who runs the football. In this case, it's a guy out wide catching it, and he's done exactly that, truly leading his team right now towards victory. Three touchdown catches. He's been the headliner. And that stretches the lead to 27. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. And they will not get a chance to return this one as it's through the end zone for a touchback. Getting set to go again as we look at the back, heading onto the field again. He's had a good performance, moved the ball effectively on the ground. Of course, he has the one touchdown. And when you're able to move it as effectively as you've described, that leads to finding a way into the end zone, and now he's just trying to do it for a second time. And, of course, with that comes additional yardage. Yeah, looking for additional yardage, and again, that second score here in the third quarter. Then he'll give it here to his running back. And not a whole lot doing there, as he'll get it up to about the 28-yard line. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. Not much happening there on first down. I thought there might have been a hole for a split second. Yeah, but it dried up pretty quickly, didn't it? Closed fast. Now let's go! Blue Randy! Blue Randy! They're going to look to throw. And the Broncos get there and take him down. And that's the second sack of the game, but this player disruptive in all phases whether he's going upfield coming underneath you name it he's a big time guy you have to block he'll look to throw quick hitter here it's complete and he'll get it up to the 33 yard line they do get nine but it leads to fourth down so much about offense is what you call hidden yardage you know you, you throw the ball to someone they catch it and then they can make a big play. You know, they create a play, run after catch. They did a really nice job there of limiting that and keeping him from a first down. Yeah, stopped him in his tracks. It'll be a 39-yard punt, no return. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. Now a handoff looking right. Oh, he's got some breathing room. And he'll get this up to the 34-yard line. That one going for a gain of 11 and a Bronco first down. Boy, he does it at a high level, doesn't he? Because when I watch him, I think of his vision. Straight ahead, peripheral. Also has that sense of where holes are going to be before they actually open. I think that helps set him apart from many of the other bats in the league. They'll need to get the playoff quickly. One quarter remains here on a Sunday night. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. Back now at the home of the champs here in Denver. A lot of happy faces in the crowd at this point as their guys have a big lead here to start quarter number four. So the offense has it first and ten. Now a handoff 
off here to his running back. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. Give him 14 yards there and a Denver first down. Do my eyes deceive me or is he getting stronger as this game moves along? Burst seems just as good here in the fourth as it was way back in the first, doesn't it? I do believe someone put a lot of time in in the offseason and continues to condition during the season in order to continue to carry the ball at this rate. And the play clock's running down. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll get across midfield and down to the 48-yard line. A gain of three, second down. Here we go with second and seven. winding down. Going to give this time to the tailback. And he's brought down. A 10-yard pickup, and it's enough for a Broncos first down. Now, this is an example of breaking down a defense because on a lot of these runs, he's getting past the point of attack, and guess what he's doing? Forcing the secondary guys to have to make a lot of tackles. Set up to throw. Buying time to his left. Look at the spit. And oh, he caught it up. And unfortunately, he's able to get this one back. So it is a first down. Opted to run for it. The decision a good one. Picking up the first, getting 14 yards on the scramble. He got it stripped, but you can see the panic in his face from up here through the helmet. He was able to dive back on it. A good bit of fortune for him because oftentimes on a strip sack, when that ball is wrenched out of your grasp, it can go in any different direction. It can go way away from you. In this case, it didn't matter. He was able to get on it. Time running out here on the play clock. Yeah, that'll be accepted, of course, and that moves him back five. First and 15 here behind the chains. Man left, man left. Flex round! Flex round! Four, four down. Here we go! Oh. Now they'll switch it up here and look to throw. Forced out to his left. Now a loose football. The ball comes out, and the Colts pick it up. And this return is going to be halted right around the 28-yard line. In today's NFL, most teams don't have as many goals for the game like we used to have where you checked off your boxes. But zero turnovers, that, that's a universal. And while it won't likely cost them in this game, they're going to regret the fact that they caught one up here. Yeah, their first blemish, they had mistake. And for a third time tonight, he's intercepted. Picked off at about the 31. Well, this defensive pressure has been constant all game long. The pass rush, the coverage. They've all been excellent, and now they'll tack on an interception here as this one continues to slip just further and further out of hand. A handoff as they run the counter play. That's going to go as a loss of two, and it'll be second down. And what do they start thinking about burning these timeouts? They've got all three still defensively. To me, you have to start right now. Here's the time, and that means you've got to stop them on defense, not give up the yardage. Use your timeouts in order to get the ball back and try and score yourself. But now is it. He rifles one that's intercepted. Picked off at the 22. And he's able to get it back to the 33-yard line. So the first interception of his career under center, and you knew it was going to happen sooner or later. It has to. And I know he feels like the world is just tumbling down at this moment, but there's got to be some veteran somewhere, some mentor that's going to tell him, hang in there, my man. Plenty more to come. Keep firing. And he'll get it out near the 40 to the 39. So a gain of six there on first. Time for a break. So the Colts in possession of the football as we get you reset. They're looking at second down now as they search for a consolation score. Now they'll throw here out of the gun. And it's a short one here, complete to the tight end. And a big hit there as he runs into a brick wall. You got the big lead defensively. 
willing to give him that underneath stuff, right? And this is why you work on your tackle. Tackle him after the catch, inbounds, keep the clock running. Just go ahead and bleed the game out that way. Back to throw here. Pass incomplete, but the flag in the backfield, and this might be a roughing call. Pushing the foul, roughing the passer, defense. Maybe a frustration penalty there because he's picked them apart. They've tried their best to get to him and haven't done it successfully. A penalty as a result of that hit there. to throw now on first down. He's going to let it fly. So they took a shot on first down, but couldn't connect. Another wayward pass. You know, things started out poorly in this game, and to be frank, they just really haven't gotten much better. And all that does is embolden a secondary. They feel good about what's going on, and they just play better and better. Now he'll look to throw here on second and 10. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. They call it a gain of 19, and it moves the chains. They'll look to throw. And it's a short one here, complete to his tight end. And they'll bring him down at the 18-yard line. A gain of six there on first. They're going to need to get up and set in a hurry. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. And he will be brought down at about the six-yard line. It's a nice pickup of 12 yards, and it gives him a first and goal. What's left? What's left? All right, here we go. Green, 39. Green. They'll run it now out of the gun. And they'll get him down here at about the five-yard line. It's a gain of a yard, and it'll set up second and goal. But a spotlight hit him once already tonight as he got into the end zone. He was trying to make it a double spotlight, wasn't he? A credit the defense, bottling him up, not letting him get in for the second score there. He'll drop to throw. And they're going to get him. They bring him down to the sack back at the 16-yard line. Now they got to get to the line quickly. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. And for the fourth time tonight, it's an interception. Picked off down near the five. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. Facing this fourth quarter deficit, felt like they had to throw the ball, and on the other side, they were ready. No doubt about it. They're playing situational football. They look at the clock. They know the lead that they have, and all they're doing is playing pass on every down. Playing the pass, picking it off, and now big time in the driver's seat. Defense still with three timeouts. We'll see if they want to use them here as the kneel down comes. And partner, this first week, this first game that we get to call together, so special every year, week one. You had the flyover, the big American flag out there before the game, all the hoopla, just having football back, so special. It is an opening day, opening game. There's just nothing like it because you really build to a crescendo. But the best part for us is that crescendo lasts for a while. Opening game here, an entire season. We get into the playoffs, to the Super Bowl. I was really excited. I could barely sleep last night. I can't imagine being a player. So for the Broncos, they start the campaign with a victory in front of an enthusiastic home crowd for a Sunday night. And they'll get to stay home again next week. Meanwhile, for Indianapolis, they obviously fall to 0-1 with the defeat. And they'll be at home next week for a date with the Houston Texans. That'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our hardworking crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, find us on Twitter at EA Madden NFL. The Broncos are winners as we say so long from Denver.